So we're going to return a search result. But now we're going to get into a bit of trouble because our data is coming back as JSON and we don't yet have the functions to, uh, to read that JSON, which is what we're going to have to do. So we're going to make a from JSON and we're going to pass in a string title. Then we're going to pass in the response uh, and not the response exactly, it's the response body. But first we need to decode that. Response, talk body, like that. And I'll pass in the page. And this shouldn't say string, by the way. I was thinking about the, um, uh, the function we're gonna create. And the page, like that. And we're gonna have to import JSON. This comes from dark convert. What json.decode does is um, when our response comes back, it's going to come back like this. It's going to be a string. It's going to be kind of ugly. And json.decode is going to turn that into something that Darts can use, something that Flutter can use. And actually, I want to keep this open. Okay. It's giving me an error because it doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create this. I'm going to say factory search result from JSON. If you guys don't remember, what a factory does is it allows us to actually do something when we're creating the object. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is read different data, specifically the JSON, and use that to create our um, um, our object. So we're going to take a string title, and the JSON is going to be a map string dynamic. JSON is always map string dynamic. I'm going to call it data, and no, I'm going to call it JSON and int page. And the first thing we're going to do here is check for this response. Uh, so in this case, I don't know if you guys can see that, I'll make it bigger. I have response equals true to mean it was successful. So I'm going to say if JSON and so this JSON is what's coming back here. And to get the data from it, I need to use the exact names they have here. And it has to be absolutely exact. If you misspell something, then this is not going to work. If you have different capitalization, it's not going to work. So in this case, it's going to be response like that. Uh, so I'm going to say if response equals equals. So you can see the way they do it. They do it with capital. Uh, and I need it to be equal to true. So if it's equal to false, and I'm actually even going to say null equals equals false, false, and I'm going to put oops, this. I should have two question marks here. What this is doing is this is saying that if the JSON response object is coming back as null, then set it equal to false. Uh, my JSON response should never come back as null, but with JSON, different things can go wrong depending on what the guys at this website do. If they do something wrong, then that's gonna fall on me. It's gonna break my application. So what I'm doing is uh, if it's null, which it should never be, set it equal to false. That means we did not get rid we did not get the response. And in that case, we're going to return a search result where found is going to be equal to false. And the title is going to be equal to the title we passed in. The page is going to be equal to the page we passed in. And, um, and we are not going to include total results because it doesn't come back here. Um, I was playing around with this a little bit because I was thinking maybe we want to store it for something like Star Wars because uh, it won't find it on page 99, but it would find it on page 50. But, you know, if we type in some gibberish, then it's not going to find anything uh, and it doesn't have that total response. Total response. So I'm just going to leave it like this. 
Okay. Okay, so that's it for if it's actually found something. But what if if it hasn't found anything? But what happens if it has found something? Well, then it's going to actually be a tiny bit more complicated because of the move summary, which currently does not have a from JSON. Um, but maybe we don't need to make one. That's fine. Okay. So if, on the other hand, we have found it, we're going to return a search result where found is going to be true. Before this, I'm going to make a list of movie summary uh, movies. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to build this first for, let's see. So this is search, and this is going to come back as a list for final results in uh, JSON search and that's with the capital S um, movies dot add what we're going to add is going to be a movie summary and we're going to give it a title of results and that's going to be title here. Then a year of result year. IMDB ID. IMDB ID. Really weird <laughs> of results. I'm to be idea, just gonna copy this. And type of results type and post um, of results post um. And again, guys, if you misspell absolutely anything, it's not going to find anything that's going to come back as null. And depending, depending on how you have your app set up, that might crash your app. So as a result, I'm actually going to give all of these things defaults so that if it doesn't find one of these fields, there's still something there. So it won't break my app. I can set this uh, as 1900. That means we don't find anything or even 1000. So we really know it means we haven't found it. If there's no IMDB ID, I'll set it equal to empty string. If there's no type, empty string is fine. And empty string. Okay, okay that's fine. So again, in the JSON search, that's going to give us this, which is a list. You can see I can collapse it or open it. And each one of these has this as an object, which is the item the result in this case and we can take the different properties like result title result year and so on and extract them into our movie summary okay so now that we have that going back to our search results found here is true page is page title is title and we're getting page and title remember from here we're passing that in through our from json constructor and then um, movie summaries is going to be the movies here. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. Total results. Total results is going to be uh, Jason. Yeah. The one over here. Like that. Okay. Okay, so you guys will notice that we're getting an error. This is because I had to make this async. I had completely forgotten about that, which means I need to make this a future because we need to be able to await this. Now, this is going to give me an error because I didn't mark it as a future here. And we're going to get the same thing over here in the end, by the way. So my remote data source now is missing get movie details, but we will do that next time.
I'm just thinking if I'm forgetting anything. I probably broke my GetX controller. Yeah, I did. This needs to be a wait, which means this needs to be async. Yeah, this is a list, <laughs> so that's gonna have to be changed. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna make this an Rx search results. And that's gonna be, I'm just gonna set it equal to null.obs for now, that's fine. The same thing here. This now needs to be a search results, no longer a list. And I'm gonna to have to change the local data interface. Same thing, this is going to be a search results. This is gonna be a movie details. Now, you might be wondering why this one is a future and this one is not. And we'll get into that when we talk about local data interfaces, local data stores, but actually for one of our data stores, it's gonna to have to be a future. For another of our data stores, it is not going to be a future. So that's gonna be fun. Um, yeah. So then I can set my search results dot value equals results here. And we're gonna end up having a similar issue here, but we will deal with that next time. <laughs> okay guys, I'm probably gonna end up splitting this video into two because we spoke about a lot of different things. Um, and yeah, join us for the next one where we'll look at movie details. But for now, myself, Avidius, I'm gonna head out. Take care guys.